All right, welcome back to this 30 by 40 three car garage. Poured the foundation yesterday, or all the footings I should say. Got all our columns laid out. These are laminated columns we're using. This is gonna have a nine foot ceiling height. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, which I've already done, is I wanna find which footing is the highest. So you might be asking, well, didn't you set them all to grade? Yes, but when you pour the concrete, um, they, they can fluctuate a little bit and it's not um, imperative that those are all perfect because you can get that back in your post and that's what we're doing. But the key for me, what I like to do is find the highest one and I make that my zero. That way, when I lay out my posts, the one, the columns that are, or the footings that are lower, I have to add that dimension to the bottom of my post to bring it up, if that makes sense. So my grade board will clear all these footings. If I picked the lowest one, then my grade board would, I couldn't set my grade board right on the footings and I would end up hitting some of them. So I found the highest one which uh, was a couple of these over here were the same. So I got that marked at zero. So then once I figured that this was the highest one, I set my um, receiver to zero out on this one. Then I went around and figured out where this one. So this one was five sixteenths lower than my zero. So this needs to be five sixteenths higher. I know it kind of is hard to understand. Um, trust me, I always got to think a little bit about this because it's kind of opposite what you're thinking. So, <clears throat> for example, if we have a four inch slab, that's going to be my bottom grade, okay? But this needs to be brought up five eighths of an inch. So, I actually have to measure up four and five eighths and make a line. And that's where my concrete is gonna be. <clears throat> and what is nice about doing it this way is then all my bottom grade board will just get matched up with this line. So, sounds confusing. So we're gonna go ahead and mark out the one that's all zeroed. And then we're gonna make a storyboard or a template out of a two by four. And then we're just gonna transfer those marks around and I'll explain more to you how I'm going to do that as we go. I've written the measurement on here so this one needs to come up one eighth so I need to add one, uh, one eighth of an inch to my post to bring this up. So what I do is come in here, get my tape, make a mark at one eighth which is very minimal Strike my line. Now all I have to do is butt the bottom of this two by four up with that line and then transfer my marks. Now I'll take that off, mark all my lines, and this column will be identical to that one once we set them up on our posts.
All right, now that we got those um, center two by sixes on those columns taken out, notched, so our truss can sit in there, we're gonna fasten them, fasten them with some 30D ring shank nails. So, and then this is also what all of the girts will get attached to the columns with as well. We're gonna start framing up this wall. So, got these all notched where the trusses sit using the storyboard. Got all my girt locations marked. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is I got my end string line up. That's the end of the building. Got the end of my post sitting in my bracket. I'm just gonna hook on the end, measure over. 98 and 3 8 and so to make sure it's a square I'm gonna start on my middle girt and I'm gonna hook on where that's gonna attach and I'm gonna make sure it's 98 and 3 8 so once we do that we know this is nice and straight square to that wall we're gonna hook on to this this way Skip over two and get a measurement, which is 16 and one quarter inch. So now we're going to go up here, hook in the middle where the girt's going to attach, and then this post should be matched up 16 and one quarter inch. Once we do that, we can start building off of this. Now that we, this, this one is square with that one and they are square with that wall, we can start building on. So every other row is gonna overlap. So we're not gonna have the same joint on the same post. The next bottom, the next one lower, will hook to this post and to that post. So we're just gonna keep doing that and uh, work our way until this whole wall is framed. And then, we can lift it up and put it up.
All right, we have our double headers in. You can see two by 12 double headers over the garage doors. So on this side wall, all the trusses will sit inside the column. On this side over here, they land on the headers. So you can see where I have marked. That's where the truss will sit. So we gotta make little stub columns that'll fit down between the double header down into our door jam. And we'll, that'll get nailed all in there. And how I got this is I just measured off the corner post to the center of that column and then transfer that from this one here so they're going to be perfectly in line which is key because you don't want your truss going in an angle so i did that for each one and have them marked all the way down across and so now we're going to put those in then i'll probably uh check the dimensions of all the trusses, trim them if I need to, so they're all good. But here are our stub columns here. We have four of them. We just made them out of two by sixes. This is our heel height for our truss, seven, seven, eights. So now we're gonna slide those up in between our headers and nail them in. And then both sidewalls will be ready for the truss. All right, guys, we got our stub columns in there's one there and there's two in between that bay and there's one over there guys we're gonna put up some trusses today and so I'm sitting here in my truss pile and the outside width of my building is 30 foot so I want these to be exactly 30 foot I always measure all my trusses this one was 30 foot and 3 8 so I'm taking 3 16 of an inch off each side that way when I put it up there I know that if I hang this end out an inch and a half on each side so it's flush with the girts, I am perfect. Um, and that's key. I don't want it to be three eighths one way or three eighths the other way because then when I go to square up my building, um, it could be a little off. So. so I put two by fours on each side and kind of angle them out just so when I put this first strap up there, there's like a little shelf that they can go in and kind of hold it there. And then what I'll do once I get it up there i'll take a strap and wrap it around one of these beams just to hold it up there while i get it nailed so should go pretty good i got the first one i got all the purlins marked out so i'll go through how i do that um, on one of these next trusses i'm gonna go ahead and get this end one up i'm ready to go so let's do it So I'll show you how I'm marking. So my ridge cap calls for the purlin at the um, top of the truss to be eight inches down that way. And I will butt all those purlins um, up and then I will just uh, patch in a two by four to strengthen them. But that way all the way across on both sides, my ridge cap will be screwed in to a purlin. Um, just versus in through the steel. So we're going to measure down eight inches. Big mark. And then we're going to go every two feet. So two feet, eight inches, four feet, eight, eight inches, so on and so forth. Until we get down to the bottom. And this should actually work out perfect um, for um, my overhang. All 
All right, now what we're gonna do, since we got our first truss up, um, I need to get my first set of purlins ready. So I got two more trusses and then I can put a bay of purlins up. So I'm gonna lay them out, made a little uh, backing there. So I'll get my purlins. My first ones are gonna be 18 feet. I have a one foot overhang. So I need 10 and a half inches past the first trust. My uh, fascia board will give me the other inch and a half to make 12 inches. And then I need a foot overhang where the purlins will overlap on the base. So we're gonna get them out. I'm gonna get measurements off the spacing of the trusses. I'm gonna mark them and pre-drill them. That way when I get up there, all I gotta do is line up that hole with the center of the truss. And that will automatically straighten and adjust my truss accordingly as I go up. So um, just, it's uh, something that's really nice to do and makes life a lot easier. Plus those six and a half inch 60D nails drive a lot easier when you have a pre-drilled hole. Make sure all the ends are good. This is gonna be my overhang end. So take a two by six, two by four, screw it into one of the end ones, pull them all tight screw it into that the end here and then pull all these in and then we will check to make sure we're square across the end so we got to adjust it just a little bit make sure all these get drilled uh, perfectly. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure uh, 10 and a half inches, strike a line all the way across these. Then I know all I have to do is line that 10 and a half inch mark up at the outside edge of my truss and then I'll have my overhang. And then we will pre-drill a hole just three quarters of an inch on the other side of that line. Then I will mark my spacing for my trusses accordingly, strike line across, drill holes. Um, so it makes, makes life a lot easier at the end of the day. All right, you can see behind us, we have all the trusses and most of the purlins, except for this bottom one that we have to put our overhang jacks on first before we can put that up. But we got to frame up this end wall and then put our last truss up. The problem you run into is if you lay your wall inside, it makes it really difficult to pull, pull it out far enough to stand it up. I'm laying my wall that's actually the top and then the wall will stand up like this what we have to do is i lay the posts in the brackets to get my distance there then i will do the pythagorean theorem to square these posts up so you can see i got nails here so i can pull diagonals so i got these two columns squared to each other and then i check square from here to the corner of that uh, 
column right there. I'm within probably an 8 3 16 inch, which is good. I'll Any adjustment, fine tuning, I'll be able to do once the wall's up. Um, it is a little trickier doing it this way, but when you're by yourself, trying to drag that out is difficult because your 2x6s actually go past the columns on the inside and you have to kind of wiggle it around. We're doing it this way and uh, I think it's going to work out pretty good. We're going to lay out our boards, get them all nailed together and then stand this wall up and then all we have to do is throw our corner posts up and fill in the girts on the side. All right, good morning, and uh, well, it's actually almost noon. Um, I had to do some office work today and some other things, so I'm finally out here at this 30 by 40 three car garage. I'm gonna put overhang jacks on. What these are, these are cut to the roof pitch. They will sit on top of the truss, like so, and that will give us our desired um, overhang which is a foot on this building. I'll just make sure I'm ten and a half inches to this edge. The inch and a half fascia board will give us our additional inch and a half to make 12 inch overhang. I've got all these pre-drilled so I'm just gonna go around and get these all hammered on. That's all there is to it, guys. So we're at ten and a half right there. Now what we need to do is cut our last purlins, which will fit in between the tails and then we need a nailer at the top for our wall for our F channel to fit in. F channel will receive the soffit and receive the side steel. You can see right up there are the overhang jacks so there will be our last girt will be or our last purlin will be between those so they'll get I actually I actually screw these last ones in in between and then there will be a nailer right here where the soffit will come back in and tie in. I'm gonna get all those cut, laid up, and then we'll go around and put them up. Once we got all those put up, we can start putting the fascia up. Just gotta keep on moving. All right, we got all the fascia on, fascia boards, last purlins up. We just gotta have one little angle here we gotta do. 
And then that will be done. We're ready to square up the roof. All right, that is going to be a wrap for this framing of the 30 by 40 three car post frame garage. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. We're gonna be doing quite a few more of this size building over the next year, so we can try to answer questions as needed. If you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next video.